Let's get right into the features and how everything works on the N90S. Starting on the top right, we have a two position switch to turn the camera on, off and on. And you can see the LCD light up and also the battery indication here on the LCD. We'll get more into the LCD in a minute. Also, when you turn that switch on, it activates the meter for eight seconds. So if we don't touch the camera, if we don't touch the shutter release, it's going to turn off in eight seconds. In front of this switch is the shutter release. Pressing lightly on the shutter release activates the meter again for eight seconds as long as we are not holding pressure on it. It initiates autofocus if we are set for autofocus. So pressing the button fully will take a photo. The camera's loud. <laughs> I'm going to deny that. The camera's very loud. And these screwdrive lenses also are loud as they focus, especially going from a close distance to a greater distance. Behind the on and off switch, we have the focus area button. This camera, unlike many of today's cameras, only has one autofocus area. And we can select from wide to spot. And we to select, we're pressing the area button and turning the command dial. The command dial, when we are in manual exposure mode, will change our shutter speed, as you can see. It is also used in conjunction with other buttons to change ISO, the mode, our drive, whether single, continuous, and to the left of this, of course, we have this LCD panel, and it's a full information LCD panel. You can see right now it's giving us our shutter speed and aperture, our mode, exposure mode. We see it's set for manual and shutter priority program. Um, we also can see our metering pattern here. Okay, that's for matrix. So it gives us a lot of information. We're in single advanced mode, our battery power, and the camera's empty right now and shows any. It also shows a lot of other information that we're not going to get into that right now. There's just so much on that LCD. You will also notice here this button, it's green, and also it has a plus and minus. That we use for exposure compensation by holding that in, turning the dial. We now can select Exposure compensation in one-third stop increments. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the right side of the camera. Let's go over to the left side. You will see a button with a green dot on it. And we saw on this side we have a button with a green dot that's also the exposure compensation button. Well, by holding both buttons in at the same time, it will reset a lot of the functions on the camera. For example, if you had set exposure compensation by holding both buttons in, it, it will reset it to zero, zero exposure compensation. If you had spot focus set, it will reset it to wide focus. So let's have it set to spot. We're going to press both buttons, hold them in, and I hope you could see that it went to wide area. So also on the left side, we have this button marked PS. Okay, that this camera has seven different program modes. I don't use them. I'm not crazy about them. It sets the camera up for different picture taking situations, such as if you were doing a portrait or landscape or close up. We also have here on the left our metering pattern button. Right now it is set for matrix metering. This camera has eight segment matrix metering. We can then turn it to spot metering, which concentrates 75% of the meter sensitivity in the 12 millimeter circle in the center of the viewfinder. And finally, we have spot metering that concentrates 100% of the meters sensitivity to the three millimeter circle in the center of the viewfinder. We also have on this left side a mode button. 
And again, by pressing that and turning the command dial, we have shutter priority, aperture priority, manual exposure, and program mode. We also have this button with the lightning bolt. By pressing that, we could cycle through different flash modes. Slow, rear curtain sync, red eye reduction. Now, I'm not going to get in too much into the flash capabilities of this camera. It's very sophisticated with the proper flash. The flash that was recommended for this camera uh, at its time of introduction was the SB25, and you will get all the features the camera has to offer in conjunction with the SB25. I have tried the camera with an SB800, which is designed for more modern cameras, and everything seems to work except for the focus assist in dim light. We also have here an ISO button, and that's to change ISO. Okay, that's at 100 now, 125, and so forth. Now, you could also set this for DX. And when it's set for DX, if you load a roll of film that has the DX markings on it, as you see here, the camera should set the ISO for that particular film. I never trusted it. So I think it's just easy enough to set the ISO yourself. When shooting black and white, I most times will use a roll of film that I bulk loaded myself. And those reloadable cartridges do not have the DX indication on them. Now you will also notice a little red rewind symbol on this button. And you also have one here. By pressing, when you're at the end of the roll, by pressing these buttons in. At the same time, it will rewind the film and it will rewind the 36 exposure roll in about 10 seconds. There is no manual rewind on this camera. And the final button in this cluster here is the drive button. All right, by pressing that in, right now we're on single frame advance. We got continuous low, which is approximately two frames a second, and continuous high, which is 4.2 frames a second if you're in continuous focus and about 4.6 frames a second if you are photographing a stationary subject. Finally, we have on this side this button here, which is our self timer. Again, by pressing that and using the command dial. Right now it's up for six seconds. We can go from two all the way up to 30 seconds. And since this camera does not have a mirror lockup, if you're shooting on a tripod at slow shutter speeds, you can use the self timer and set it for maybe five or six seconds and then just move away from the camera and it will count down and, and make the exposure and there's less likelihood of any camera shake or vibration. That five or six seconds allows the camera kind of to settle down. Okay, so on the right front of the camera, we only have a couple buttons. Let me just tilt the camera a little so you can see this more clear. This is our depth of field preview button, okay? It will stop the lens down. And we also have an autofocus lock button. Useful if you're using continuous autofocus. By pressing that button, it will lock the focus in. Okay, so now let's come over to the other side of the camera. Right, we, will, we have a switch to change from manual, single, or continuous focus. Okay, right now the camera is set for single focus. Single focus is single focus with focus priority. We use this for stationary subjects. What focus priority means is you will not be able to release the shutter until the subject is in focus. And you can see in this illustration of the LCD panel, next to AF, you see the letter F, signifying focus priority. Now, when we switch the camera into continuous autofocus, it is actually continuous autofocus with release priority. Release priority means that the camera will fire whether the subject is in focus or not. 
and we use continuous focus for moving subjects. And you can see here in the LCD, next to the AF is an R signifying release priority. Okay, we have our lens release by pressing that. We can remove the lens. And when you remove a lens, it's always best to have the camera turned off. We have a standard Nikon 10 pin connector behind this cover for a remote control. Also, it would connect to a data link, which in conjunction with a sharp organizer, you would be able to control some functions on the camera. Again, we're not going to get into that. Uh, we also have a piece, a threaded PC outlet to plug in your flash. And the flash sync speed for this camera is 1 to 50th of a second with a dedicated flash. Uh, I should also mention the dedicated flash view here. Again, the flash that was recommended for this camera, that was the standard flash when this camera was introduced, is the SB25. Now, let me just talk a little bit about shutter speeds. I said that flash top flash sync speed is 1 to 50th. The shutter speeds available on this camera, let's put it into manual, okay? They go all the way from 30 seconds, and I'm not just, let's just dial this down, all right? To, to, uh, so it starts at bulb, okay? Bulb, as you probably know, when you press the shutter release, the shutter opens. When you let go of the shutter release, the shutter closes. That's used for long exposures. But the nice thing with this camera is it will time exposures down to 30 seconds. And now let's go in the opposite direction. Again, these are in one-third stop increments. You're changing your shutter speed. Okay. All right. It's up to one eight thousandth of a second. Now, let me just talk a little bit about the various exposure modes on this camera. Cameras with the CPU, you can use shutter priority, program, aperture priority, of course, manual exposure mode. However, if you are using an older lens, a manual focus lens, obviously you don't have autofocus, but if that lens doesn't have a CPU, and most manual focus lenses do not have a CPU, you are limited to aperture priority or manual exposure control. Because if you're using one of those lenses, the camera has no way of controlling the aperture, so you must do so yourself. Now, if you're using one of these autofocus lenses, you should have the aperture locked down to its minimum, which in this case is f22. If you don't, and you are in, let's say, shutter priority, you're going to get this message, FEE. -E. It's just an error message, meaning lock it down, turn it down to its minimum. You could see uh, it's indicating low here because there's not enough light for that, that shutter speed. So let's just get to a quicker shutter speed. There we go. Now we're down to a 15th of a second, and it's indicating the exposure of F4 in shutter priority mode and matrix metering. All right, another thing with lenses without a CPU, you will not have matrix metering. You will, however, have center weighted and spot metering. And if you have matrix metering set and you attach a manual focus lens without a CPU, it will automatically go to center weighted. Why don't we mount a manual focus lens and I'll show you what I mean as far as the metering. And also while we're doing this, let me just mention which lenses will work on this camera. This is an AIS 28 millimeter lens. And we're going to mount this on the camera, no problem. However, if you had a non AI lens. This is an AIS, so AI manual focus lenses, AIS lenses, 
will work just fine. If you could see this little tab here, and that tab connects to this portion of an AI or AIS lens. The older non-AI lenses will not work with this camera. They will damage this follower tab here. Okay, and what that does, it indicates to the camera what the aperture is. But again, do not, do not try to mount a non-AI lens. Okay, so let's mount this AIS version. AI and AIS, for our purposes with this camera, are exactly the same. And it could be, if you have an older lens, it needs to be modified. So those lenses can be modified to work on an AI camera. All right, so now we have the lens mounted. And I had the metering system set to matrix. Okay, I'm going to... I have it set for aperture priority, so you select the aperture and the camera will select the shutter speed. But when I put light pressure on the shutter release, you will notice that the matrix metering indication is flashing. So it automatically set it to center weighted. Now we could do that manually here. Okay, center weighted or spot. So spot or center weighted will work and the only modes that will work, the only exposure modes that will work are aperture priority and manual. Now you will also note when using a lens without a CPU, the aperture that you have selected is not shown on the camera LCD or in the viewfinder. You get this display here that you see of F and the two dashes. So the aperture can only be set manually and the camera will not display it. Now I tried various lenses on this camera, dating from the earliest Nikon autofocus lenses, such as this 28 millimeter 2.8 and including this 24 to 120 G lens, which has no aperture. Okay, they all worked fine. This lens autofocus, no problem. However, I did try a third party lens, this Tamron 45 millimeter 1.8, and it mounted fine. Exposure modes were fine, however, it would not autofocus. One other thing with this camera, if you have a VR lens, vibration reduction lens, such as this 24 to 120, vibration reduction will not work with the N90S. All right, let's look at the back of the camera. With glasses, you can see the entire frame. The eye point is 19 millimeters. On the right here, we have an auto exposure lock. So let's say we're using spot metering. We meter for our subject, and now we're going to recompose. We just hold this button in until we make the exposure, and it will lock in that exposure. On the left side, we have a button here. I think it originally had like a bulb symbol on it, but by pressing this in, it will turn on turns on for eight seconds and lights up the LCD in green, also lights up the display inside the viewfinder. And we also have here a viewfinder blind. By just pressing this, it will keep stray light out of the viewfinder. That's good if you're using the camera on a tripod, and uh, so no light gets into the viewfinder and could mess up your exposure. Let me just talk about the viewfinder for a few minutes. It has a full information viewfinder. The large circle you see in the center indicates the center weighted metering. It is the 12 millimeter diameter circle that is common to a lot of Nikon cameras. In the center you see a three millimeter reference circle and that's for spot metering and spot focus. Okay, when you have the selector set to spot focus, 
that is the area that it will be focusing on. You see brackets to the left and right of that center circle. That is the wide focus area. Outside of that is the clear matte field. You could focus anywhere on that field. However, with these autofocus cameras, the screens are more designed for viewing than for focusing. In the bottom left of the screen, you'll see the focus indicators, and that black spot indicates you are in focus. Now, this camera also has an electronic rangefinder visible in the lower left of the focusing screen. And if you're using a manual focus lens, if it's in focus, that center spot will light up. If it's not, one or the other of those arrows will light up and will indicate the direction you should turn the focus ring to achieve focus. When the center spot lights up, you are in focus. Okay, so the information in this viewfinder is quite a bit more. You have exposure mode that shows your shutter speed and aperture. You also have an analog display for exposure, your frame counter, if exposure compensation is set, and a flash ready light. Also, the screen on this camera, which is a Type B, can be changed to a Type E, which is a grid screen. Those are the only two screens that are available for this camera. The B is the standard screen that you see here. And to change the screen, you remove the lens. There's a tweezer that comes with the new screen, which is used to exchange the screens. All right, so when we're done our roll, it's going to press both these buttons to rewind. Now, there's no film in the camera at this time. To open the back, you're just going to press these two together, and the back springs open. Okay, and you can see there is the contacts for DX film. You also see for the data back, there was an MF26 data back. And again, I'm not going to get into that. It's very sophisticated. Um, this back is renew removable just by pressing down on this, and it comes right out. Okay, so you could attach that data back. You can see here has a couple of rollers here for film flatness. Also has a little window here, so you could see what type of film you have in the camera. Now when loading, what you're going to do is put the cartridge into the left side, bring it across, make sure the tip of the leader goes to that red point there, okay, and do not touch the shutter curtains. These are metal, this is a medical, a metal focal plane shutter and you can damage it by touching it, so just be careful. Once you close the back, Press the shutter release one time, it's going to advance directly to frame number one. And now you can see this indication here, symbol for the roll of film, there's a couple little lines to the right indicating that the film is loaded properly. You will also see number one in the frame counter. Now as I showed you earlier with this button on the top, okay, this PS button, will allow you to se select seven different vary programs for landscape, for portrait, etc. This just shows you what those are. There's a symbol indicating, for example, the first one shows a woman's head and that's the portrait mode. Okay, there's one that shows a mountain with a sky and that is the landscape mode and so forth. All right, and those are indicated on the back. On a lot of these cameras, this back material, which is some type of a rubber, would deteriorate fairly quickly and it would become sticky. So what you can do if that happens, and I have another model of this, which I will show you in a few minutes. I just took some isopropyl alcohol and cleaned it off. And then the back becomes very shiny. And you could see some of that right here, where that material deteriorated and I guess this one just came off on its own, or maybe from, this is where your thumb rests, and it's very shiny. Doesn't really affect the function of the camera. All right, so just, let's look at the bottom for a second here, and we can see we have a standard tripod socket, and right here is the battery compartment. This camera takes four AA's, 
and just take a coin. With the N90S, you get about 50, 36 exposure rolls with a set of alkaline batteries. So I'm going to remove that. And now I'm going to take the MB10. And the MB10 also takes four batteries. You just press this button on the back, okay, and it slides right out. And there we have four. These are actually rechargeables. It will use rechargeables. Okay, and after taking off the other battery holder, we just slide that in and we screw it down. Make sure it's tight. And now those four batteries will power the camera. So it gives you the same frame rate, it gives you the same battery life, because the you know, same type of batteries for AA alkaline or rechargeables. Other nice thing, and probably the best thing about this grip, is it gives you a vertical shutter release. Okay, and it's in this position, it is on. When you cover the red dot, it is off. It also is nice with that grip when you're using longer lenses. It gives you a better balance with the camera and uh, is more comfortable. I would usually leave it on all the time. All right, now this camera, the N90S, was introduced in 1994. And it was in production, I believe, until 2001 and was replaced by the F100. Okay, so two years before the N90S was introduced, Nikon came out with the N90. Now the N90 and the N90S are very similar, took the same MB10 grip. However, there were a few improvements on the N90S. The con maximum continuous release mode on the N90 was 3.6 frames per second, where the N90S was 4.6 for stationary subjects and 4.3 for moving subjects. Also, the N90, when you change your sh shutter speeds, okay, you're changing them in full stop increments. Okay, we're at 125, go to 250, 500th of a second. Whereas the N90S, you were changing them in one-third increments. Also, the N90 did not take the data link which worked in conjunction with the Sharp organizer to give you some additional functions and control over various functions on the camera. One thing that the N90 has that the N90S doesn't is a three position switch. On the N90S, it's a two position on off switch. So on the N9, on the N90, we have off, we have on, and then we have beep, and it will beep when your subject is in focus. And I mentioned earlier about the shiny back. Here is the N90, and you can see how shiny it is this. When I got this camera, bought this used, the rubber was deteriorating, and I, I just took some, as I said earlier, some isopropyl alcohol and cleaned it off. So now it's very shiny, but really doesn't affect performance at all, of course. Now the title of this video says that the N90S is one of the most affordable autofocus film cameras in 2023. And that's true, especially for the quality of this camera. It's very well made, it's fairly rugged, it's not pro level, but it's very close. When this camera was new in 1994, it sold for approximately $1,000. And you can find them today for well under $100. So I think if you're looking to buy an autofocus film camera, this is a great choice. There's plenty of them on the used market. If you have any questions concerning the N90S, please, Leave your question in the comments below or email me and I always respond to all comments and questions.
So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with the new video, usually, every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So I will talk to you next time.